Hello all, welcome to another video. Welcome, welcome. So, this one I'm just gonna say, you know, mysteries of the false motor or something, because I'm still learning things about this as I go along. So let's get started. And here we have a pulse motor set up. Let me just shut it off and I'll, I'll show you what's, what's happening. So we have over here our Hall effect sensor. I'm not like going for precision or anything right now. I just threw this together to get it spinning. And it's going into the Arduino and it's doing bipolar commutation. That's those two switches that are the black boxes. And so when the Hall sees a north magnet and then a south magnet and then a north magnet, it triggers current into this in the appropriate fashion so that this is pulsing, you know, north and then south and north and south, hence bipolar. And over here we have um, a full wave bridge rectifier consisting of four diodes. And the AC is going to, from the ends of the coil to the yellow lines to the appropriate place there. And then this is the negative out and this is the positive out up there. And so I've just put in for visual feedback, optical feedback, a little diode there so that we can kind of see what's going on. And I'll also just, you know, mention I've done all this also with um, single wave, uh, I'm sorry, uh, you know, monopole commutation and just a single diode rectification and I pretty much see all of the same trends. Um, I would say, though, from what I'm seeing for pretty much everything, the bipolar commutation where you get the push-pull going on here is, is better. That about sums it up. So, you know, for instance, we're at 4 volts. We'd probably be pulling 20, 25 milliamps. That's what I've seen before. Now, some of that, again, you know, I'm not being precise, so it could have been just happenstance and... You know, you get into getting the positioning right and then the pulse wave modulation. But, you know, how long your pulse is and things like that. So I think that was a little bit more extreme than it actually is. But in general, you're, I would say you're, I mean, it's, I, I think you're pretty much always better off uh, setting it up this way. And so let's spin her up again. Um, and give me a minute to let it spin up. So once once it's spun up, I'm I I can't even get the thing to draw 10 milliamps. I mean, it's saying 10 there, but it's it's more like seven or something, uh, going down towards five. Um, with this setup, where again the the monopole would probably be drawing about 20. Now the first thing, if I move this thing around, I'm now. <laughs> You can see this is a little bit different geometry than I used previously, and part of that, as you know, I've gotten at in previous videos, is that once you set up and you see that it works with this geometry, then you can see it's a very simple thing to bring the other pole of your electromagnet to bear at the same time, hence doubling efficiency. Um, but that's you know that's going to wait on the design and the 3D printing. But there's, you know, there's enough that you want to get down for us. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to slide this around in different positions in relation to the Hall effect sensor. So move it out here. And look what happened to the amp draw. Boom, the amp draw is way high. It's not spinning any faster. It's even starting to slow down. And I can feel it in my fingers here that there's like this friction. So I'll bring it back. And it needs to, it needs to, it actually slowed down, so it needs to pick up speed again. But it'll go right down to like seven, eight milliamps. And then if I bring it around the other way, same thing. So again, now the air gap with this geometry is held constant, but you can see there's a sweet spot, and it's right about there. So that's sort of your first pro tip. When you're in that sweet spot, there's something really strange that goes on. I'm going to take this and I'm going to just turn the turn it all the way down to zero. Now you're going to say, whoa, you didn't turn it down to zero. I did, and you can do this yourself. That's 
that's your voltage. And what that's coming from is the magnet swinging past, going into the coil, the, the magnetic changing magnetic flux hitting the coil, and it's putting that out. It's going down now as the rotor slows down. So we'll turn it back up to four. And <laughs> you tell me how it gets rectified. I got nothing. And I've shown this, you know, previously, but, you know, also if we do it again, just to, to confirm here, I'm going to shut this down to zero and look at the, the amp draw. The amp draw is now negative and there's 2.6. So I don't know how that gets um, rectified back to source, but it happens. And that's, that's I'll, you know, I'll continue thinking about it. Um, but that's what happens. So that's, that's a first mystery. Now, this is one that I just learned like an hour ago that I'll share with you. Recall how a minute ago we were moving this into different angles in relation to the sensor and it would draw more power or less depending on whether you had it in the right spot. There's a great spot right there. So now what I'm going to do is turn this off. I mean, turn this down to zero. I still want to see the number. And now, oh, if I can show it at the same time, I'm, I'm moving the there. I moved the I moved it before, and see now it's actually going negative. Well, what is that? Yeah, that's 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 going up. Yeah, so now now it's doing that. Yeah. But if I put it back in the sweet spot, even though it's almost slowed down so much, we're still getting something there. So let me spin it up again. Let me see if we can observe what's happening with the milliamp draw as I do that. So I'm gonna I'm turning this down to to zero. And now I'm gonna move this around. And see now it's going the wrong way. Here it's negative there it's positive even though there's nothing there okay so you want to look around for that spot where the milliamp draw is, is the least and the rotational speed is not slower there I mean I'd have to double check that but um, if anything that seems to be where it's fastest so to move on to another mystery why is that LED lit and I know there's, there's the conventional freaky free energy people explanation. <laughs> Sorry. But it's like, is anything conventional in this, uh, in this field? Um, but why is that lit? And there, there's actually two reasons. It's a hybrid. And I'll demonstrate that for you as well. And it's like once you kind of understand these things, then you can start to think about how you engineer it for efficiency. But unless you kind of get down the basic ideas of what's going on, then it is, uh, you know, just shooting in the dark. So the main reason people say that's lit is that every time one of the magnets trips the Hall effect or, you know, it could be a, a sensor coil or it could be a reed switch or whatever that gives you the pulse of electricity that goes in there, you get that pulse, and then when the power shuts off, the magnetic field that's established in the electromagnet collapses, and for Faraday's law, then there's a displacement current that shoots back, and you either capture it, if it's monopole, you'd capture it with a single diode. I don't think there'd be a reason to, to have, um, I'm not sure, I'd have to think about that, but uh, when it's AC like this, where you're switching the coil back and forth, you want a four-way bridge rectifier. So it's the flyback, as they say, or the radiant. But that's not the whole story. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to shut this off. Kaboom. Now there's nothing going into the coil, but that's still going. It's again, it's coming from the magnets. So you have to think about it. Because this thing's a pulse motor, there's a brief pulse that goes in there and does its thing to get motive force. And then it's just a coil of wire sitting there. And if it's coil of wire sitting there during that time, it's a pulse motor. 
and let's spin it up again and we'll look at it one more time so I think it's kind of spun up and I'm just shutting the power off again and there's something there and the faster this was going the more of that there would be and or the more wire that was next to magnets the more of that there would be now let's look at another thing if I take this coil while this thing is spinning focus if I take this coil while this thing is spinning and just pull it out here now it's going to have nothing to do with the magnets everything that we're seeing there is going to be from the pulse and then a flyback so what happens with that so, so you can see the majority is from the flyback but there's a portion of it that's from and look at what happened to the amp draw I mean it hasn't slowed down that much so that's just another confirmation of the weird thing I was saying before and really as it goes slower because there's going to be more time for the coil to saturate that might even get brighter um, so that it's true that the flyback is predominant but you are also getting stuff feeding into there from the magnets going past let me just do one more thing because when I shut the power off we can see that there's power going into there when I turn that down to zero we can see that the majority of this seems to somehow be shooting back here if we pull this out is there any change so now I'm gonna turn this down now it was going to three before so that's interesting in itself so that's really about it um, you know it's just for such a simple motor you're just pulsing the thing like that there's just all this complex behavior right? stuff shooting back to source you have when you pull off the the flyback you have that but you also have stuff that's getting thrown into it because of the magnetic flux from the magnets and so now you know now that one knows how this behaves you can start to to think about how to engineer for it and so as i said you know one of the things is going to be extend the rotor down have a second layer of magnets you know where the wood is there and now you just brought this into bear and you know it's going to double the torque out it's also going to double all the weird stuff that's going on here but you know before i even do that um because you know i'm gonna have to i'm gonna have to fire that thing up and it'll take a while to get all this stuff i, I have to finish designing it and then printing it and then make sure i printed it right and, eh, eh. <laughs> i don't know why i'm getting annoyed <laughs> so thanks uh for watching everyone and uh until next time, stay healthy. Ciao.